Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's time to do an oil change on the Goldwing DCT. I get a lot of viewers asking me what's it like to change the oil on a Goldwing, especially the DCT version, as compared to like a Harley Davidson or some other bike. So I figured I'd document it while I'm doing it. Toshia was involved in changing the oil and both filters, two filters, on the Goldwing DCT. Here's what's required to change the oil and filters on DCT, on a Goldwing DCT. Five quarts of oil. I use the Honda GN4 oil because that's what's recommended by the manual and it's fairly inexpensive compared to like Harley oil and stuff, so I just use the Honda stuff. You've got the engine oil filter. I just buy the Honda part from the dealer. It's, it's good enough, it's a good price. Then you have a second filter. This is for the DCT, the dual clutch transmission. It has its own oil filter that you gotta replace that too. And then there's three little crush washers, aluminum crush washers that Honda recommends you replace them with every oil change. Now I've done two oil changes, 4,000 and 8,000, uh, 4,000 and 12,000 miles on this Gold Wing so far. And I've honestly, I've just used the same crush washers both times. But I figure for 20,000 miles, I'll change the crush washers because. Why not? Oh, and by the way, disclaimer, I am not a mechanic, nor do I wish to be one. <laughs> this is all how I change my oil. I'm not telling you how to do yours. Disclaimer, nada, nada, nada. All right, what you can see here is the bottom side of the gold wing. I have the engine warmed up already, so the oil is hot. There are actually three drain plugs on the Honda gold wing DCT. One right here. This guy, they're all 12 millimeter hex bolts, drain plugs. And there's one right up under it, too, right next to it. You can kind of see them. Let me get the light under here where you can see it better. Yeah, those two right there. That's one and two, and then three is back here. And three is back here, right there. That's the third drain plug. This cover right here is where the DCT filter goes. You take that cover off in a little bit and they pull out the DCT filter. And this is where you see the engine oil filter right there. It looks like a standard car oil filter or a Harley filter, but pointing downward instead out the side. And you see, I've got a big oil pan here. It's actually larger than you should use for this, but. This is what I have, it's what I'm going to use. So first I will loosen these bolts. Oh, there. Crank, crank that one. Let's do both of these together while I'm here. Oh, wait. Go this way, okay. Alright. Now this should come off pretty easy. I'll do the bottom one first. I can drain it down into the into the pan here. Now I want to try and do this without making too much of a mess, but this always gets a little messy because again my drain pan is the wrong size. Inevitably you're going to get dirty doing this. There we go. Not too bad. I've done worse. <laughs> now let's work on this other drain plug. That's for how this compares to changing oil on a Harley. Harleys also have three drain plugs. The engine, the crankcase, and the prime, or, oh God, whoa, <laughs> whoops. Anyway, like I was saying, the Harleys have three drain plugs as well. The engine oil, the transmission, and the primary. So it's not entirely different time-wise from doing this and doing a Harley. Good job. Now let's try and do this without burning my hand or making too much of a mess. 
I don't know if you can see there or not. I'm trying to do this while film at the same time. <laughs> it's not that easy. I think I'm here to catch the wheel too. Um, the only the big difference between a Harley oil change and the Goldwing DCT is that you have the, the third filter, meaning for the DCT engine. That's plug number three. The second filter of the DCT filter is the tricky part of this whole oil change process, to be honest. The rest of it's pretty simple. Even I'd say, I'd say a bit easier than on the Harley, to be honest. The filter is definitely easier to get to and easier to change without making a mess of the bike. I always hated where the filter is located on Harley Davidson's. Just makes a mess when you do it. While the engine is draining down, I'll change out these crush washers. You can see they look fairly flat. Whereas the new ones are a little more conical shaped. But honestly, it's not a big difference in my opinion. So I'm not exactly sure they need to be changed out as often as Honda says they should be, but I bought them, so I'll put them on. While the drain holes are draining down, I like to loosen the main filter here. Of course, this wrench oh, doesn't seem to want to work. I don't have the Honda OEM filter wrench that you're supposed to use. I just have one in my toolkit that I have for something else, car filter or whatever. So I just use a normal filter wrench and just undo it. Whoa, that's really on there. <laughs> And once you get certain, once you get it loose enough, you can just do the rest by hand then. I know some people say you can't get a normal filter wrench on this thing, but I do. In my, in my opinion, it works just fine. Now, this is going to make a mess when this filter comes off. So everything's going to drop down, so make sure you got your oil pan under it. Once the filter lets loose, yeah, there she goes. <laughs> but it's still far nicer than it was on the Harley Davidson when the oil went all over the bike. <laughs> At least in this case, the oil just goes on you and in the drain pan and not all over your the front of your engine and that kind of stuff. Now I'll just let that drain out for a bit and then I'll put the plugs back in and put the engine oil filter back on before I do the DCT filter. Now I'm going to snug in the drain plugs here just to stop a leaky mess and they're just dripping now so the oil is mostly drained out. Here you can see with the drain plugs with the new crush washer on it. Make sure you get it threaded straight on because this is an aluminum engine so you don't want to cross thread anything and strip any threads out. Snugged up pretty good. Now I'll snug in that last drain plug just to prevent drippage under here too. All right. Actually, while I'm here, I might just torque those drain bolts up so they're done. The service manual says to torque these to 22 foot pounds. And that's what I do. You don't want to over torque these because again, it's an aluminum engine. Now what I do with the new filter first is I'll actually pour some oil into it to fill it up a little bit before I screw it back on. With lots of like vehicles and cars and motor bikes and stuff, you can't do it very well because the filters go on sideways or whatever and they make a mess. But with the gold wing, it's not too bad because the filter goes on vertically. Oops, well, a little much. <laughs> yeah, I just get it right up to the top of the seal before I screw it on. And I also put oil on the gasket too to lube that up. you're supposed to do that all right so now we just screw the filter back on make sure you're spinning it the right direction <laughs> you don't drop the filter full of oil but that would suck and then you can't really turn this by hand because you can't get your hand around it so i just snug it up here with a filter wrench just until it feels sort of secure 
you know, don't snug it up too far, just enough to give you confidence it's on. Now comes the fun part, the DCT filter. Under there is where the filter goes. So you gotta remove this cover with these two eight millimeter bolts, hex bolts, and the cover drops down and the filter drops out of that. Part of the problem though is that the filter cover has an o-ring around it so you got to be a little gentle with it so you don't cross it up especially when you put it back on and you drop those two eight millimeter bolts out and you're going to get a bit of an oily mess once the second one lets go but you got to be careful because there's a spring under there too that you want to retain so you don't want to lose your spring there we go that was easier you can see right there the spring in on the end that uh, sits in the drain cover that's just loose there it's not fixed in place you see it moves so you don't want that falling into your oil drain because you might lose it yeah you got a better view of it now you can see the spring sits inside this little divot on the cover so there's the o-ring that goes around the edge of the cover that seals it back up when you put the cover back on but you got to be careful putting the cover on because you can pinch the o-ring it comes out fairly easy so you got to put the cover on straight up carefully and slowly and really put it on straight so you don't cross it up so that o-ring doesn't get pinched it's probably the most tricky part of the entire oil change up there you can see the filters up in here you have to fish that out i usually get a screwdriver and i'll do that in a bit Okay, so I just get a Phillips screwdriver and I just put it up in there, just work that filter out. So no, I probably need a smaller screwdriver, I guess. Got a smaller little fat screwdriver. Let's put that up there in the hole and pop this thing out. <laughs> How embarrassing. It's not coming at all. I've got a pair of backwards pliers here. There we go. Got the sucker out. <laughs> I almost swore. <laughs> so there's the dirty filter. It's pretty black. Considering this is the new one. Now it's important when you put the new DCT filter in that the gasket side goes up into the engine block. There's a hole in the bottom of the DCT filter. That hole is for the spring to go into. So the spring goes in that embossed hole, the gasket side goes up, and that spring on the embossed hole goes in the bottom of the cover plate. Like that. So cover plate, spring, filter, and then push it all up and back in the engine block. While putting the cover on straight so that gasket doesn't pop off. Like I said, this is the trickiest part of the whole process. Now if you push this filter up here, it won't stay on its own. So what I do, because I've only got two hands, <laughs> I put the little screws in the cover holes. I put the spring in the embossment in the cover. And I put the filter on that and put the filter up in the hole. And then I start the screws in place to hold it all where it's supposed to go. So I'll just start one screw and then I'll start the other one just like that. So now it's all held in place. Now I can incrementally tighten down each screw on both sides of the DCT filter cover a little bit. And by going in small increments, makes it fairly easy to get that cover in straight while snugging up on that o-ring straight and level so you don't cross it because this is the way i've done it for the past two oil changes and it works pretty good i've had zero problem with that filter now the service manual says to torque this to like nine like nine foot pounds of torque but they're very small bolts i don't have a torque a small torque wrench to do small increments like that so i just snug these up by hand very very gently and I do each side just a little at a time 
to get that plate on straight. Kind of like how you torque with a wheel on a car, how you cross doing a star pattern. I just do this back and forth in a very gentle back and forth pattern until they're snugged by hand with a small one quarter inch socket. I use a small socket so I can't get too much leverage on it. I do that on purpose because again, this is an aluminum engine housing. You don't want to strip any bolts or anything. And there you have it. All that's left to do now is put oil back in the bike. So you fill the oil in the bike. You're on the left side of the motorcycle. There's a drain plug right here. The manual says to put in 4.9 quarts. Now I have a gallon jug, which is four quarts and a one quart jug. So that's five quarts altogether. So there's 0.1 quarts left over. So personally, I just put it all five. <laughs> Technically it's over filling it by 0.1 quarts, but it's worked good for me so far. Haven't had any problems. So I'll keep doing that. And this is why it takes me forever to fill the bike up with oil because my funnel is not ideal for this. I could buy a better funnel to make this go faster, but for how infrequently you have to do oil changes on a new gold wing, it doesn't matter. So that's one good thing about doing oil changes on the gold wing here. It doesn't cost as much as it did on the Harley. It cost me 60 bucks to get all the stuff, the filters and the oil and the washers and everything to do oil change on a gold wing here on the on the new DCT Gold Wing. Whereas on my Harley, it cost me more like $95 for the Sin 3 oil, six quarts of that, and then the Harley filter and everything. So not only are oil changes cheaper on the Gold Wing, they're also more infrequent. So you do less of them. And when you're done, you just take out the funnel and put the plug back in. Hand tight. And that's it. She's ready to ride again. All right, so when changing the oil filters on my Honda Goldwing DCT, there's always one more step I do personally to complete the process. And that is go for a test ride to warm the engine up, and then I do the DCT initialization procedure. Now you might ask, what is that? Well, it's a little sequence you can do here, a little initialization routine that can it, it aligns the clutches of the dual clutch transmission so that they operate like it's supposed to. Basically, it's kind of like doing a clutch adjustment for a manual motorcycle, like a, an old fashioned shifting motorcycle. <laughs> well, the Goldwing DCT has two clutches inside of its transmission. They shift automatically, but you can reinitialize the computer to shift the clutches properly, just like adjusting the cable on a, on a normal manual clutch. Now here, I'll pull in here and do the procedure quick for you to show you how it's done. You have to ride the bike until the engine's warmed up and you can tell that by these three bars right here. When the three temperature bars are up, you know, it starts at one and then goes up to two and goes to three. When you have three bars, the bike's warmed up. So now, turn the bike off, shut it down completely. Now I put the parking brake on so the bike doesn't move around because you want to keep the back wheel from turning. You want to keep the bike still when you're doing the procedure. <laughs> All right, beamer. Thanks. It's not a beamer. Yeah. So the way you do this is you hold down the D for drive button. You turn the bike on and you wait for the yellow engine light to go out the mill light. Now you key in a Nintendo cheat code sequence. D D N D N. And you see the drive bar goes to a flat bar, you know, the D signal or the N signal goes to that. Then you know you're in the DCT initialization procedure. So then you start the bike and you hold the bike still and you hear that, that clunking and the like a whirring sound. As long as this is flashing, it's doing the procedure to initialize the clutches for the DCT. When this flat bar, this flashing flat bar turns to N for neutral, it's done initializing and you're all good to go. It takes a while sometimes. Now the reason I do this is because when you put new oil in the bike, you know, the dual clutch transmission uses the engine oil. So when you change the viscosity of the oil, the clutches shift differently technically. See now it went to N. So now what I do is I turn the bike off, shut it down, and then she's all good to go. 
So we change the oil, we do oil change, you're changing the visc viscosity of the engine oil and the clutches shift differently. So by doing an initialization at the end of your oil change, the bike should go back to shifting properly and smoothly and like a Goldwing DCT should, so you don't feel it at all. <laughs> now, turn the bike back on. Start her up. And take it for a test drive. <laughs> it's a Gold Wing! <laughs> you too! And now, she should shift buttery smooth like she's supposed to. Smooth, seamless, easy automatic shifts. <laughs> and that's it. Once I initialize the DCT clutches, the bike's all good to go. As long as you got no oil leaks, you're golden. She's shifting smooth as a hot knife through butter. You'll notice when you change the oil on a Goldwing DCT after you do that init procedure, the bike shifts better than brand new. It goes back to being just beautiful. And you do, you know, once, you know, at the, towards the end of an oil change, you don't really notice it because it happens gradually, but the bike does shift a little more clunky than it's supposed to. You just can't tell because it's a gradual change over 8,000 miles. That's my oil change procedure and video for Moto Mengi. <laughs> if you have any questions, post them down below in the comment section and I'll answer them. Or if you have any comments we're to make, go ahead. I'm going to point out any errors I have or any procedure mistakes I do, go ahead. <laughs> like I said, I'm not a mechanic. I'm a shade tree mechanic. I do it myself, but I get by. Thanks for watching everyone, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got some entertainment value out of it, or at least learned something maybe. Stay safe out there, take care, and see you in the next video. I'm gonna go for a little bit of a joy right now. Later everyone.